Welcome back. We're going to talk about the final process of optimizing your horse's diet, and that's looking at their vitamins and minerals. Now, we've done the first four steps, and now here we are at step five, are all vitamin and mineral needs met. Now, to kick this off, we're going to start with the minerals, and the minerals are broken into two classifications. You have macro minerals and then micro minerals. Now, the macro minerals, their requirements established by the NRC is horses must get grams per day in the macro minerals. And then in the micro minerals, they get milligrams per day. Doesn't mean they're not all important because they're all critical to your horse's overall health, well being, performance. So when we look at the list of macro minerals, you probably see some things that you can recognize calcium phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, and sodium. Now to show you what they do in the horse, you can see that they are important for bone structure, that electrolyte and fluid balance, nerve transmission, and muscle function. So all playing key roles in those processes in your horse's body. Now, when we look at hay or hay analysis, typically what we see is a lot of these macro minerals are being met the requirements by the NRC through forage. Yet you can see in this example, looking at some average haze from Ontario, they're missing sodium. So they're just under that 100% mark. And this is where you would want to add salt to your horse's diet to get them above that 100% mark. Now, switching gears to the micro minerals, again, these are needed in lower amounts established by the NRC. And it's a pretty big list. You can see iron, zinc, copper, manganese, cobalt, selenium, and iodine. But again, all very important to your horse. And when we look at that more specifically, they're important for the horse's metabolism to operate efficiently. Immune function, so that overall health of the horse and their immune system, very important. Hoof growth, very important there. And skin and coat quality. So all of these micro minerals are playing key roles. And then when we go look at our hays or forages that we feed our horses, we can see often they're deficient in some of these micro minerals. Now to help explain that why, let's just use selenium as an example. You've probably heard, oh, your horse needs selenium. Around the world, there are selenium deficient soils. So depending on where your forage is grown, they may be deficient in things like selenium or some of these other micro minerals. So as that plant grows and there's no selenium in the soil or very low amounts, that plant can't take any selenium in it. So then when the horse eats it, it's not getting any selenium in its diet. And typically forages will have gaps and it's going to depend on where that forage is grown. So this is why it's so important to get your forages tested so you have the knowledge of what gaps there are in that forage and then you can fill them. Now we're gonna move on to the vitamins. Vitamins are organic compounds. That means they have carbon in them and they're very important for the horse's metabolism. So they play very key roles in some of those metabolic reactions. Now for many of these vitamins, the NRC has established guidelines and we know the daily requirements for things like vitamin A, D, and E, and then even things like thiamine and riboflavin. So all of those have requirements, but when we look at the vitamins that don't have requirements yet, the NRC has not set those yet, but we know vitamin C, biotin, and those other B vitamins are critical to your horse's overall health and well-being. So we want to make sure they have those in their diet. Despite not having a requirement, doesn't mean they don't need it. They absolutely do. And to carry this even further, if you are feeding your horse mainly hay and they have very little pasture access, just be aware those hays are going to be in lower amounts of vitamins E, A, and C. And so, again, this is going to probably mean you need to provide some additional sources of these vitamins to make sure your horses is getting all of their nutrient needs met. 
Now, when we analyzed over 6,000 diets, there were some trends that we noticed. Oversupplied nutrients included energy, protein, and iron, right? So that's something that you want to make sure that your iron is not in supplements or feed if your forages are high in iron. It's not something that is typically needed because it's generally oversupplied. And this is according to uh, the trends that we noticed. When we looked at deficiencies, there was deficiencies like sodium. So those electrolytes in 71% of the diets were deficient. Then antioxidants such as vitamin E, over half the diets were deficient in that. So then when we look at what deficiencies mean to the horse or these imbalances, what it could lead to, things like hoof health. Horses that are deficient in some of these nutrients could suffer from more cracks, rings, or abscesses. Now, genetics plays a role in this. Also, how the horse is kept or maintained. If they're on wet environments, dry environments, all of that can play a role. But we do know the nutrients and the diet play an important part in maintaining health hoof. To explain that, the horse hoof is made up of keratin. And through the process of developing the keratin in the horse's hoof, things like zinc, biotin, and amino acids, we know we have the best evidence for, are important for that keratin synthesis to ensure our horse's hooves are healthy and strong. So again, those nutrient deficiencies can play a role in, in poor hooves. The other issue that we can look at with nutrient deficiencies are in our horse's joints. And again, when we looked at over 6,000 diets, 38% of the horse owners had concerns about joint health in their horses. So if we look at our young horses, they develop things called developmental orthopedic disease or DODs. And we assume on research is looking at the nutrient imbalances in the horse in these young growing horses and the development of DODs. So again, there's evidence that lends to that these imbalances you know, can harm the young growing horse. Then when we look at arthritis in our aged or performance horses, again, nutrient imbalances could be playing a role in these joints. So all in all, when you look at the nutrients that are so important for joint health, you have things like the bone health, the calcium phosphorus, bone development, vitamin D, that cartilage that's very important in the joints, amino acids, and then that antioxidant protection. So you got zinc, copper, and selenium. We all know play very, very important roles in joint health. So to kind of take this home, that just underlines the importance of vitamins and minerals in your horse's diet. We do know forages are deficient in some of these macro minerals, micro minerals, and in certain instances, the vitamins. Again, the best thing you can do is have your forage tested, and that's going to show you where these balances, imbalances are in the horse. And then you can look to fill those, which in the next video lesson, we're going to show you just some simple things you can do to make sure you're meeting your horse's needs. So look for that.